What did the sacrifices look for? I want to go through basically about five of these sacrifices, which are the major things. Five different types of sacrifices, and this is from Numbers, the early chapters in the book of Numbers. Our first sacrifice is the whole burnt offering. And this one's really complex. What gets burnt up in the whole burnt offering? The whole thing gets burned up, okay? So the whole thing gets burned up. Um, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so the whole thing is burned up. So we've got, that's why it's called the whole burnt offering, because the whole animal gets burned up. Is this going to be the most expensive sacrifice? Yeah, you can pass that back. And, okay. Um, actually, why don't you just keep it, okay, for until the class is over. So the whole thing is burned up. When was the sacrifice given? It was given in the evening and in the morning. So there'll be in the morning, they'd do a whole burnt offering. In the evening, they would do a whole burnt offering. And the whole animal would be burned up. This is the most expensive of the sacrifices. It's totally, the, the thing is totally dedicated to God. The thing is totally dedicated to God. The whole animal is burned up. Totally dedicated to God. So now, another type of offer, offering that occurs in Leviticus chapter 4 is what's called a sin or purification offering. A sin or purification offering. Your different translations of your Bibles will translate these offerings differently. And they're really the same thing, but the sin and a purification offering. And this, in this offering, the status of the person counts for something. So if you're a priest, you have to offer like a, a bullock or some big animal. If you're a priest, if you're a community or a leader, you offer something more. If you're a regular person, you offer up like a sheep or goat. Okay. So if you're a priest, you have to offer up much more. If you're a commoner, you offer up a, simply a sheep or a goat for yourself. What's very interesting is that this sacrifice also, if you're poor, if you're poor, you can offer up two turtle doves. If you're poor, you can offer up two turtle doves. Now, this brings me over to the New Testament. And think about the book of Leviticus. Think about the book of Leviticus. Mary has Jesus as a son. She gives birth to Jesus. Is Mary unclean? Is a woman after childbirth unclean? 33, 64, six days, okay? After her, her period of uncleanness is over, does she have to come and offer up a purification offering? Yes. What does Mary offer up? When Joseph and Mary come for purification, what does Mary offer up in the New Testament? Does anybody remember that? Two turtle doves. What does that tell us about their status in that culture? Yeah. Was Jesus reared in a, in a, a middle-class family, or was Jesus reared in a poor family? Two turtle doves tells us Jesus was not. You say, well, carpenters make good union wages. Well, you know, that's just down in Boston, okay? In the real world, though, outside, the, Jesus was raised in a poor family. Mary offers up two turtle doves. That tells us they were not people of big, big high status at all, and probably more the reverse of that. So this is kind of an interesting in how it kind of goes into Jesus. Sin and purification offering, whenever purification is needed, they'd offer up this. The other thing that's important about this one is the priest got to eat some of this. So the priests got to eat certain parts of this. They would wave certain parts of the animal before the Lord, and they themselves would get to eat some of this. So the priests, by the way, in these sacrifices, was God providing for his priesthood? Did the priesthood actually get food out of, the, out of these sacrifices? Yeah, so God's taking care of the priesthood because the priests are not going to have a lot of land, okay? The priests didn't have farms and things like that. They got Levitical cities and things like that. They didn't do a lot of the, the, the farming type things that the other people. So when they brought the, the sacrifices, the priests would get to eat part of the sacrifices. Now, next sacrifice. This one's translated many different ways in different translations. The reparation offering. This is called the reparation offering. I like this best calling reparation offering, but almost no translation translates it like that. When you see reparation offering, what is the purpose of this offering? Reparation. You've got to, in other words, before you offer this one, suppose you stole somebody's sheep or goat. Before you offer this one up, you have to pay that person back four times what you stole. So you have to make reparation before you offer this one up for some violation. It's also translated the trespass offering or the guilt offering. So these are three names. Usually it's translated one of these. 
I like reparation because it actually tells more what the actual function of this offering is. So it's for reparation, for paying back. The priest, these two are done almost exactly the same way. In other words, part of the animal is burned up, and the other part the priest gets to eat. So both of these, part of the animal is burned up, way before the Lord, and the other part the priests get to eat. Now, let's suppose you're a priest, and you see somebody coming with a sheep or goat. Which one do you want? Do you want the whole burnt offering, or do you want one of these? The whole burnt offering, do you get to eat any of that? No. Question, when it's one of these, do you get to eat this? Would this be a problem for the priesthood later on that the people start getting like, uh, their mouth starts watering when they see the sacrifices come? And actually we're going to see, there's a guy named Eli and Samuel. If you guys remember some of the Eli and Samuel stuff, Eli and Samuel, you're going to see Eli's kids ripping off the meat of the sacrifices. Now, by the way, is that really pretty bad when you rip off God's sacrifice? And so Eli's kids, it's not going to go over too well for them. But anyways, do you see the problem? These kind of sacrifices they got to eat from, the whole burnt offering they did not. So they start hoping for these kind of things to happen. Now, another one, and this is the fellowship offering, or the it's called the shalom, the peace offering. Okay, the peace offering, peace is shalom in Hebrew. So fellowship offering or peace offering, and this takes three different ways that this one makes its way in. It can be just done for free will. In other words, you can just bring an offering to God because you just want to bring an offering to God. A free, by the way, have any of you ever heard of a free will offering? This is the, kind of the background for this. It's just done not out of uh, you know, obligation or responsibility. It's just you choose and you bring, uh, by your choosing, you offer up a free will offering to the Lord. This one is also used for a vow, the completion of a vow. We're going to look at the Nazarite vow today. And when you complete a vow, you do this fellowship or the peace offering, and that's how you finish the vow. You make a sacrifice to the Lord. And sometimes you can do it as a todah, as a thanksgiving, just to give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever kind of thing. Uh, his hesed endures forever thanksgiving offering. So this peace offering is done for these three reasons, but what's really neat with this one is, guess who gets to eat this one? It's called a fellowship offering. That means the people that bring the animal, they get to eat some of this. So the people themselves get to eat this one. So this one you would eat with your family and the priests and stuff together, and you basically, this would be a communal meal together. And that's why they call it a fellowship offering, because everybody gets to eat part of it. Okay, so these are the major offerings in Israel um, with the animals. And then there's one more. And I don't like calling this one a cereal offering, because when I say cereal offering, what goes through your head? All of a sudden you got, you know, Cheerios glowing through your head or post toasties or whatever going through your head. But actually, cereals are what? Grain, the grain offerings. And does anybody remember the two types of grains that Israel had? Wheat would be one, right? Wheat, does anybody remember the other? Barley, yeah, that's right. Wheat and barley are the two grains that were raised in Israel, wheat and barley, uh, wheat, um, bread, and things like that with barley. And so you'd offer up this wheat and barley, you'd offer up, now by the way, was this one with blood? Was this one with blood? No, this was a wheat and barley offering. It could be done with oil and salt, but no yeast. There seems to be something with yeast making the bread rise and that kind of stuff. No yeast, but it could have salt and it could have oil. When I say oil, we're meaning what? Olive oil. And so you can put olive oil in with the grain and mix it up and make, you know, and go up from there. So these are different offerings. Yes, Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There would be incense. Uh, in the environment, um, and you could offer up, actually, there's an incense all offering. Um, and God had special incense made. There's, there's different aspects of that. There's certain high priestly, that the priests had special incense that they burned on the incense altar. God specified the formula for that so that there was a particular odor or fragrance when you walked into the tabernacle that was specified for the priests and stuff. But there was also an incense altar, and you could burn incense in the area. Yeah. Yep. So, but, you know, it's, it's more, it's not like the rest of these are more um, sacrificial kinds of things. But, yeah, good. Very good.